How's it going, everybody? I'm Danilo Evangelista, and welcome to our off-season the Hurricane Hub discussion for Saturday, January 14th, 2023. I have not been posting for a few weeks since it was the holidays, and both of the Saturdays that we had um, on the 24th and 31st were holidays, too, so decided to take those weeks off, but now we're back. It is back um, into business and talking about what to expect um, going forward. So we're back to that and starting off today with a look at how the satellite looks at across the Atlantic. It is obviously nothing really much of interest. The MDR has, um, we've been seeing dry air, of course, that is ex to be expected in the off season. And then we have all of this um, extra tropical activity. And we have this low pressure off the East Coast, which did get a little bit of interest on Twitter that models have been thinking that this would try to do something, and it still could. Some um, hurricane season is not really restricted to any specific time of year, but I don't really see this becoming anything, and it's just either way an interesting feature to watch um, on whether or not it does become something. Um, some other things of note, we have the ITCZ, Intertropical Convergence Zone, which is all the way buried right near the equator as it is expected for this time of year. Usually when we see the ITCZ lift north is during hurricane season when it lifts north because the waters get warmer here and more suitable for showers and thunderstorms to occur. But obviously since it's January, um, we ain't really seen stuff that is much in the way of encouraging for much showers and thunderstorms, obviously since it's only January and we're far removed. Um, from hurricane season. Other than that, what you can the last thing that you can really notice is, um, and this is probably the most important thing as to why we really don't see hurricanes this time of year. Look at all this strong um, winds that are moving in the upper levels um, over here because we have this big trough of low pressure. Um, it's moving upward and northward. But then as we look out here in the rest of the Atlantic, you can see right here, winds that are moving westerly that are moving out of the west to the east in the upper level, upper level clouds that are, coming, um, that are cutting and are moving pretty quickly in the upper levels from west to east. That is indicative of strong um, westerly wind shear, which is what hurricanes do not like, and that's what prevents hurricanes from development, and that is most prevalent in the off-season, which is why we typically don't get development between uh, December and December and May because that's when the upper level winds are strongest and are most prevalent because of course of winter and other things too and of course um, and of course those winds are weakest um, and most favorable for hurricane development from June to November which is why most of the times that's our best chance of development um, then and which is why hurricane season runs from June to November. Um, taking a look at the United States, we have, of course, this low pressure that's been moving off the East Coast. Actually, just to, just out of um, the sake of doing it, did actually get snow in New York City today. Nothing accumulated, but we did at least get some snowflakes. I guess a little bit of something to cheer me up, especially since if you if you live in New York City or if you live along the East Coast, you know that it's we've been in a snow drought, snow drought so far this year. We're well into winter and we've not gotten any snow yet. And despite that, despite the fact that we do not get any snow, we've gotten a lot of cold days so far, especially in December when everybody was stressing that we would be in a pattern that would be suitable for cold and snow. We only got the cold and not the snow yet. So I guess the fact that we did get a little bit of snow today makes me a little happy, a little bit happier and less um, sad that we've not gotten any snow, but still nothing accumulated. So I'm still waiting for accumulation actual accumulation so far this year because so far we've actually had no accumulations at least in new york city and central park but hopefully hopefully <laughs> we'll get it eventually but taking a taking a look away from the east coast and out towards the west coast you can see another big powerful system moving into the west coast bringing them another day of just straight up rain and flooding and high winds and oh my god this area has just been pummeled with so much rain it's really not like anything i've really seen they've been just getting storm after storm after storm um and the rain has just been piling up and this is worse especially in the west because um we've been in la nina for the past few years and that has been causing a drought in the west um meaning they've not been really getting a lot of rain 
and for all of this rain to just come in right now and just dump load it back to back, um, especially that we're just coming out of a drought now because, well, obviously, end the drought because it's been so much rain, or at least come close to ending the drought. Um, the atmosphere is not given enough time to be able to soak in the rain, so there's just been so much flooding, and there's actually been some damage too because of the flooding. And I'm going to show you right in a little bit that that's not the only rain. This is not the last system they're getting. They're still getting more rain in the weeks to come, and it looks like it's going to last up until the end of the month when maybe we might see a pattern change, but we're not going to really talk about that much um, in this video today. Um, but I will mention, though, is what's going on right now, and you can just look at the Weather Prediction Center. Not the Weather Prediction Center, the weather.gov, the National Weather Service, will actually look at something from the Weather Prediction Center right after this. But just look at what we're seeing across the West Coast. F flood watches, flood advisories, flood warnings, and um, winter storm warnings in the interior mountains because... Um, they're getting the snow from all this precipitation in the interior mountains of California. And if we go to the seven-day um, the seven day rain forecast and precipitation forecast for the Weather Prediction Center, that's not the only amount of rain that we'll be seeing. We'll see potentially up to several inches of more rain up along the up along the west coast and basically all of California to be um, to really put it into general perspective, basically over the next seven days, we'll still see rain in um, Northern California. You could potentially see up to four or five inches of rain, depending on where you are. Southern California, right where, I guess that's right by San Diego, they, they, are, they could still expect two to three to maybe even four additional more inches of snow, depending on, of course, where you are and up into Los Angeles and then up the West Coast. Um, still anywhere from one to maybe two inches, depending on where you are, could still see more rain. And that's, that's just how it seems like it's going to be for the next few days. But as I did mention, this will continue towards the end of the month when we will see a pattern change. And if you want to see that for yourself, you can look on the models and see. They are showing a little bit of a shift and potentially, hopefully, um, they'll, get a, they'll, they'll get a break from the rain because, trust me, they need it. Otherwise, it's just going to continue to flood and devastation will continue because, trust me, it is pretty darn nasty out there. But moving on from that, now let's get to the hurricane portion of the discussion, as suggested by the title, The Hurricane Hub. Um, taking a look at what we see across the Atlantic and, of course, across the Pacific. And so WISE has been kind of warmed up over the past few weeks in the eastern regions, and that's been getting a lot of talk about El Nino. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in a little bit, but there's been a lot of warming up occurring in the eastern portions of the Enzo. The western portions that I'll show you in a little bit has actually remained steady closer towards the dateline, um, closer towards the area of the Nino 3.4 region, which is honestly, that's the most important part of the Enzo that we track. That's been remaining more steady rather than weakening and kind of warming up. Um, compared to the eastern part, um, but still that does show that there is a gradual decline of the La Nina occurring. It is slowly fading away, and as we go towards the next few months, we probably will see that continue and on into hurricane season. Meanwhile, in the Atlantic, um, noticeable thing, um, Atlantic generally above normal, very warm off the coast of Africa. That is very interesting. If that will persist through the winter, then that will be something we really need to talk about. Uh, the Gulf of Mexico still remaining very, very, very warm as it has been. That cold air that we saw in January, in, not January, late December, closer to Christmas, if you remember that, about 7 degree temperatures to New York City, so it was real darn cold. And even parts of Florida, I think, got 30s. Um, despite that, the Gulf of Mexico was still well above normal, and this will play a factor not only into hurricane season, but in the shorter, the shorter term but also play a factor into severe weather season. So that'll be something we need to watch very closely. Other than that, the rest of the Atlantic, the Northern Atlantic, still pretty darn warm. And let's face it, has been that like that for quite a few years now where the Northern Atlantic has just remained so warm. And I did mention this before, it did have a distorting effect on the Atlantic, especially closer towards peak season because we would have warmth in the MDR most years. 
and then we would have all of this warm um, waters, these warm anomalies, sometimes even warmer than the deep tropics, or most of the time, really. Um, and that would kind of distort things, and that would cause a very weird pattern. And so it'll really be interesting, especially for hurricane season-wise, how, if this persists, because um, we shouldn't really be asking that question, because I personally believe the most likely outcome is that it will persist. It is becoming a overall trend that we've been seeing over the last few years, and it's likely to become a, a far long-term trend. But the question that really should be asked is the magnitude of how much it persists and how much that, uh, that that's really the main question I think we should be asking, at least into how much of an effect, how much of a distortion or how much of a shakeup there will be in the pattern that'll affect hurricane season. That's what I think the most important question is when it comes to these anomalies in the Northern Atlantic. And then other than that, we have the Central Atlantic, which is the Central MDR and the Caribbean, which is more closer to normal, kind of having that cold of dead neutral anomalies, even some slightly below normal anomalies. But in terms of concern for hurricane season, it's only January. So um, this isn't really important and this shouldn't really be looked at as much of a factor right now. But of course, will once we get closer towards the hurricane season. Gulf of Mexico, to, to put into this perspective how the actual sea surface temperatures are, we looked at the anomalies. Now we're actually looking at what is at the surface, what are the actual readings at the surface. And you could clearly tell it's warm when we have 25 degrees Celsius, almost 26, um, poking up right towards the central Gulf of Mexico. Um, that's really not what we would be seeing much of this time of year. Usually the 26 degrees Celsius line would kind of be tucked into the Caribbean, which it is, but that also includes the 25 degrees Celsius line as well. And then, of course, up towards up towards the close, the coast, closer um, to the coast, right with the shelf waters, obviously it'll be a little bit colder because, number one, it's winter, so obviously we'll have that colder air. But number two, the shelf waters are are much more shallower in depth, so they're more susceptible to um, warming and cooling of the ocean that occurs. So we have that, and of course, these anomalies here, these um, readings, I should say 17, 16 degrees Celsius, is a little more normal given, of course, that it is winter. So nothing too fishy along the coast, but in the general Gulf of Mexico, things have been quite warm, and look off the East Coast too, that remains the same case, too. We have 24, 25 degrees Celsius extending all the way up along um, the Gulf Stream, um, even as much as 20 degrees Celsius, not far off the Carolinas coast. So it just goes to show the entire Atlantic is still very warm. And um, heck, I guess if you could go off the coast from the Carolinas and kind of um, take a boat ride to roughly around this area and then get dip into the water would still be warm enough to swim. I guess that I guess that's the best way to put it of how warm it still is because it is quite warm and that is well reflected in the anomalies that we saw earlier. And taking a look at some other stuff for the Enzo, we talked about how um, it's been remaining generally steady despite the eastern portion um kind of warming up and that is well represented here where so we are at a valley right now of negative one degree celsius below normal so we're kind of in the moderate la nina territory and if we just take an average of how that has been going since october notice i if you really you know how in math they kind of i and i learned learned about this when you have to kind of draw a line through a unstable graph to try to um depict the average if we really draw that line, you could really see that we've not really been going much in terms of the way, in terms of going up and down over the past several months. We've really just been remaining steady. So in terms of La Nina really dying out or being in a hurry to die out, not really the case, especially, now this is something really interesting, especially when we look at the SOI, because... I feel like a lot of people, when it comes to chatter about El Nino, and if you've been on Twitter, if you've been on Weather Twitter, you know you know that for the past few um, past few weeks, especially, a lot of people were talking about whether or not we'll get an El Nino or not this this year, and not really as much in the context of hurricane season as much as talking about it in general. 
Um, but something to note that I think is kind of absent sometimes when people talk about the ENSO is the discussion of the ENSO of the SOI, which is taking the pressure readings from Tahiti and Darwin. Um, in a nutshell, that's basically what it is: taking the pressure readings from Tahiti and Darwin um, in the southern hemisphere, and together those two different pressure readings kind of depict how the trade winds are, how the pressure system is to determine how the waters are, how warm or cold um, the Pacific is along the equatorial Pacific, which of course has a huge impact on ENSO. And if we really take a look at the SOI over the past of, over the past, let's say 30 days, because the, the daily contribution is not really the most important thing when it comes to ENSO. I think the most important thing to depict how the pattern has been sustaining over a longer term, especially when it comes to SOI, is um, the 30-day and the 90-day average. And look at how that's been faring. The 30-day average so far is at 20.40, is at 20.44 points, while the 90-day average is at 12.57 points. And by the way, just to give you a rule of thumb, the con the uh, threshold that the that the Australian Bureau of Meteorology, which I think this is from, or the Queensland government, um, the the uh, threshold that they use to determine um, wh whether or not the SOI depicts that we're in a La Nina or El Nino state or not is seven points. So both of these numbers are well above that threshold. And if we look at the 90 day average, we notice that basically that has been remaining steady. No, nothing really in the way of um, ups and downs or really any big fluctuations. And when we take a look at the um, 30 day average too, um, instead of really on a downtrend closer towards a neutral or a negative SOI reading, as an average for the past 30 days, we've been going up. So really, if we really want to talk about El Nino, we really are not seeing stuff that really suggests that El Nino is coming anytime soon or really in a hurry because the SOI is not in a deeply negative state. It's not closer towards neutral. And in fact, it is very positive. And until that dips down, we're not really going to see much in the way of uh, El Nino hurrying in and La Nina getting out. Now, I do want to mention though something that is also very interesting is the CFS V2, um, and they've been showing an El Nino um, occurring. Although I w although I do know that there's been a lot of talk about how um, the CFS has been almost in a way downtrending from from having a significant El Nino um, as opposed to earlier months because earlier months they would develop the El Nino right as we come into summer and I think this is actually the wrong map let me see is this, is this the right map um, I guess this is the right map because I do remember a lot of people talking about how the CFS v2 in the shorter term has been downtrending when it comes to showing uh, El Nino developing quicker but I guess on the recent model runs they've actually been back to showing that but They've been showing earlier that El Nino would not develop as quickly, and I, and if I were to give you my personal opinion, I would tend to agree with those earlier ones that they were showing. I guess from earlier this week, if I remember looking at earlier this week, the El Nino was coming in a lot more later in the forecast period rather than sooner, and I would tend to agree with those model ones because if we look back at the SOI, not really much of a change um, going more towards the El Nino pattern. So. The, there's that, and then there's the CPC um, probability of ENSO over the next few months and into ESO, into the August, September, October period, that period that we watch very closely. Um, they do sh still show El Nino as a highest chance, roughly at 51%, um, while they do show a La Nina chance very low, um, as of course La Nina is um, on its way out, and then they do show neutral roughly um, just under 40%. So they have the best chance for El Nino and the least chance for La Nina. I don't know. We'll have to see because at, at least at the way I'm viewing it, I just don't see how La Nina or El Nino is going to really make it in as quick as 
some people are saying or as um, fast or as boldly as others are saying because I just don't really see the pattern there. The SOI is not really at a state right now where we could really see any fast development of uh, El Nino. And also with that too, if we look at other stuff like the MJO, the MJO has also kind of been struggling to move into the Pacific. So it really depends on what exactly happens. And of course, whatever happens, it's really only January. So when it comes to effects, when it comes to the hurricane season, that's still a little bit further down the line. Hurricane season is in June. We're still six, five, six months away from hurricane season. So, and still more than 100 days away too. So depending on whatever happens, we'll see. But um, when it, but when it comes to this El Nino and La Nina discussion, especially this year, I will say it's pretty interesting because, of course, this year, at least out of the last few years, in my opinion, I think this has been quite of a um, year when it comes to, or at least in the year upcoming and the year progressing, I think this year does seem like it has the most amount of variability. And it does seem that there, that it does have the highest uncertainty when it comes to El Nino or La Nina, especially since we are exiting a La Nina um, that has been ongoing for the past three years. Um, so compared to those, um, it's looking very likely that this year will be more of a different pattern. So that will likely lead to much more uncertainty. So the bottom line that I'm trying to get out is we'll have to see. My personal opinion is we'll have to watch if we really want this other media to come in. It really will have to start changing now. And I don't really see that. But other than saying that it will change and change in a good enough time for this other media to come in. But of course, we'll have to see, and we'll have to see how that pans out, and whether or not, and whether or not, and this will affect hurricane season, and how, of course, it'll affect hurricane season. But um, for for now, that's it for what we have for today. Of course, if you liked what you saw, um, please, I really would like it if you go ahead, like, subscribe, turn on the notification bell, because that is the most important thing. You could subscribe, but if you really want to subscribe to actually getting the videos on time whenever I post them, you need to click the notification bell. And so that's something you need to do as well, uh, as well as share. So we can, of course, grow the community for hurricane season. And I'll be back again to posting every Saturday, um, of course, up until hurricane season. So if you want to see that, please go ahead, subscribe. That's it for now. Thanks for watching. Have a great um, rest of your weekend and a great week ahead, and we'll see you next Saturday.